Live from New Orleans, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2017. Brought to you by Veeam. We're back, this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here at Veeam on 2017, day two. Bill Philbin is here, he's the Senior Vice President at Hewlett Packard Enterprise and runs the storage business for HPE. Great to see you again, my hey, friend. Hey Dave, it's always good to see you. You really? always look so, so oh, fantastic. Thank you, where's the tie? <laughs> I, said, I, yeah. I was saying, I, I, you guys, didn't. those of you who didn't see it, Bill, Bill nailed the keynote uh, this morning. Yeah, it was exactly. great, it was, it was funny, self-deprecating, and genuine, and essentially, you know, you resonated with me, because I got four kids, and you were talking about how you call your kids, you either get voicemail or their voicemail's full. That's right. You text them, at least your kids text you back. I got to Snapchat my kids to get a hold of them. So you got to you gotta <laughs> well, get into they Snapchat. They have told me that texting and Facebook is so, so you know, 20th century day. Yeah, so. <laughs> I said, you, you, you email them, right? You get yeah. some important email, you send it to them. I'm like, email, what no, are you kidding you know, me? It's so it's, it, no. you know, it's our, we're just, our lives are challenged. But nonetheless, you got some of your challenges of your own. You're running yeah. a big business now at, at HPE. Yeah. Um, you guys are making some serious moves in the marketplace. Give us the update on the HPE storage business. Yeah, so thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Dave. And you know, every every uh, every squirrel finds a nut in the forest eventually. So I just had a pretty good day today. But that was because we have a great story, uh, frankly, to tell. And I think you know, uh, as I was saying before, you know, storage business is changing uh, rather dramatically now. Is it? Is it self-inflicted or is it, you know, just a just a, you know, a course correction? I actually believe it's it's self-inflicted in the sense that we've taken many of the capabilities that were previously on high-end systems and we brought them to the mid-range. We've we've thinned it, we've deduped it, we've compressed it, we've got it on SSDs, and so the whole business model now is different than it was five years ago. Before you sold somebody an appliance, you chucked it full of spinning media. They ran out of IOPS. You sold another appliance, you chucked it full. It was a pretty good business model. That's how I kept Mrs. Philbin in the lifestyle. She's, she's grown a custom, <laughs> right? Well now, you don't chuck it full of spinning medium. We chuck it full of SSDs. IOPS are almost on, on, on guarantee. And then you take all that com compaction technology and that has actually forced a, a fundamental change, I think, in the storage uh, landscape that we, uh, including uh, Hewlett Packard, have uh, inflicted upon ourselves. I think, I think if you take a look at that and then you take a look at the storage landscape and the number of vendors that are out there, you know, I think that is changing as well, which is you know part of the reason why we decided to get into the get into acquiring uh, companies like uh, Simplicity and, and Nimble. And you got a knife fight going on in, in all flash. I mean, yeah. I got to say, you know, what HPE did with three par surprised me and probably a lot of people. Mm. Most people didn't think you could kind of quote unquote bolt on flash into right. that architecture. Obviously, it wasn't a bolt-on. You guys have been very successful when you talk to your competitors. We certainly, when you talk to customers, they mm -hmm. love it. When you talk to competitors, they say, yeah, we can compete with company A, B, and C. It's three par that we have trouble with yeah. because it's simple and it, and it works. And, and sometimes enduring technologies actually extend beyond you know, single, single generations, right? And so we certainly have heard the story about the new versus the old, and, and being old, maybe this is my perspective, but, but you know, enduring technologies actually can transition across architectural and technology boundaries, and that's exactly what we've done, um, uh, exactly what we've done with 3PAR. Now, having said that, you guys have been, I mean, you saw 3PAR initially with, you know, spinning and yeah. hybrid, took off, you know, justified the acquisition, made the transition to all flash. Yeah. I've called it many times, three parts, the gift that keeps on giving. So how many times can you, you know, go to that well, right? So you guys have made some moves here, um, not the least of which was nimble, I want to talk about mm -hmm. that, and Simplivity. So even though Simplivity is not under your organization, yep. it's, you, know, you're, you have an affinity there. Talk about those two moves and where they fit in the portfolio. So let's just start with the three part, just the three part comment just for, just for a quick sure. second. I mean, the, you know the you know the the pure plays versus sort of the the what they call the state plays. I'm sort of imagine that that three part is a state play technology, right? I, I don't agree with that statement, but that um, you know the way I, I the reason I don't agree with it is that we're actually growing faster than the pure plays in the all flash market. We have more revenue than they do, so um, I think that's it's it's comfortable for people to sort of set one technology up over another. But the fact of the matter is um, that we're growing faster. The other thing about the market is it generally gravitates towards technologies that, that are unique in purpose, regardless of what they cost, because the customer demands it. And all Flash started with you know, guys like Fusion IO and Violin Memory and all of those guys, right? Eventually what happens though is customers tire of those additional assets in their data center, right? One more thing 
They don't want their data center as one more thing in their data center. And that's when the, the big guys eventually sort of overtake uh, the position. So I think what you're, gonna, you're, you're starting to see in the, in the storage landscape is compression at a company level, right? You, you're seeing uh, the Nutanix and Pures you know, sort of out there. You're seeing then the next tier of companies trying to sort of you know, make the big break. And uh, the last time a, a company made a big break in the storage business, okay, that's, that's still independent today, that's a bi billion dollars of revenue or more, was NetApp. Net yeah. <laughs> because storage looks like it's easy going in, but it's not easy when you think about bare metal and databases and transactional systems and highly available. And it's not that easy, and so that's why a company like a Nimble, who has great technology, InfoSight, the Casual file system, great, great people, um, to order scale that business profitably and, and have the go-to-market reach needs to align themselves with a company like um, Hewlett Packard. So we're really, really excited about, um, about um, Nimble joining the family for sure. And that enables us to sort of take this, the flash portfolio further across the, across the landscape. On SimpliVity, I think the way that you should think about our strategy at Hewlett Packard is it's all about choice. So you're a customer who wants to sort of, you know, uh, put assets in your data center and have assets uh, in uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud, we should enable that. If you're a soft, you think software defines the right way to go, we should enable that. You have an appliance customer, we should enable that. If you want to co-locate applications in a simple, easy, easy to use uh, interface with storage, we have that, that simplicity. But that choice shouldn't come with operational complexity. So one of the, the things that we have to do, and I was talking about this uh, at the keynote, is we have to somewhat hide ourselves behind the application and make it easy for customers to, con to consume because that is what the web offers them. We ought to be able to federate the data so that you can actually move your data around when your requirements change or you've got a burst, uh, and the administration ought to be really, really simple. So our strategy around technologies like SimpliVity or Nimble or 3PAR or you know, uh, MSA, XP, is all around giving customers choice without the operational complexity of having lots of things to manage. Okay. Bill, I, I, I guess um, I'm trying to, for our audience, try to uh, maybe compare and contrast a little bit yeah. against, uh, you know, what was formerly EMC, now Dell EMC, uh -huh. um, which the knock on them for many years has been, they've got so many products, they overlap. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we've covered for many years how, you know, if I have three par and you know some of the other HP, HPE uh, storage yeah. products, right? I, I can I can move between them. Is that the mm -hmm. differentiation you're saying? Well, so I think even two, though if you have two is less than plus SimpliVity plus you know three par. So three is less yeah. than seven. Yeah. So let's just start start with that answer, yeah. uh, and maybe it's not seven anymore. I, I, you know, I've lost track. Um, Second, um, I think if you're really talking about provisioning storage and networking compute from an application layer, really what you're doing is you're, you're, you want to have a conversation about the, the service level underneath the, that the storage provides. Maybe for certain applications you're okay with thinly provisions or not thinly provisioned, et cetera. So one answer is a lot of those, a lot of those capabilities are actually hidden by the application layer. However, we know that the, the, the thing that doesn't move all that well is data, and data has gravity. So being able to move data in addition to moving your compute is one of the reasons that the differentiation for us over the, over the other guys. Okay. But you know, and let me just stay on that for a second, Stu. We're all storage guys, or at least mm. quasi-storage guys. And, and, and he's only a quasi-storage guy? He's really a networking guy. <laughs> oh I worked at a storage company for 10 years, but yeah, I'm a okay, networking then you're, 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 guy, you're so a newbie then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you look at history, it is, yeah. it is shown that you actually have to have multiple architectures to increase yeah. the, the size of your TAM and penetrate the That's marketplace. Right. I mean, NetApp is the exception that proves the rule. I mean, they could only go so far with, with Waffle. I mean, you were there, yeah. and, and you know. And, and so even now NetApp makes a move for solid fire. Obviously EMC has been very successful with, you know, I think it's 17, mm -hmm. so not seven, but, uh, but it, it actually works. And so, so that, that, that dogma of, well, we have to have one architecture is yeah. never proven to really be a winning and strategy. It, and frankly, it is really hard to actually stretch an architecture from top, from top to bottom, right? Um, and so I don't disagree with the, I don't dis disagree with the comment you made, but that is effectively, however, the same problem with the storage startups today is if they do a single thing only support virtualized environments, only whatever it is, right? Only support VDI. The breadth is what customers are looking for. And if you don't have the breadth, or you're forced to go get the breadth by adding bolt-ons to try and get, get the breadth, it's just, it's, make, it's gonna make it very, very difficult for them to survive um, in, the, in, in the new world order, so. Uh, and both, ac both acquisitions, SimpliVity and um, Nimble were great for the company, really great. 
Bill, can, can you tie together for us HPE and Veeam, how those mm -hmm. fit together? And w one of the big themes we've been covering is the, the extension of Veeam started very, very much virtualized. Now they're physical, they're talking about all yeah. the cloud solutions. Uh, ha expect there's a lot of fit between your strategies. Yeah, there is. So, I mean, mm -hmm. for years we've had a very, very strong technical partnership between the Veeam engineering team and the StoreOnce engineering team. Um, and I think, um, you know, that is like the basis of trust, I think, is the, way, the best way you can think about it. Um, we both sort of got competing roadmaps on occasion, but at the end of the day, it's all about sort of what's best for the customer. So that number one is the technical tech, technical people. Second is we have the same view of the market, and I talked about this this morning, which is this highly available, you know, always on sort of environment is is the same story that we tell. So the messages are aligned. Uh, the third is that it's complementary. We have our own sort of data protection technology with Data Protector. We have our own sort of snapshot management capability with RMC. And the question is, how do we sort of you know protect the entire environment? And Veeam is a, is a, a critical asset in uh, in that. So uh, it's a great business partnership, great technolo technology partnership. Um, and uh, uh, the fact that that uh, our, our folks can now resell Veeam uh, has just launched the launch the business forward. Well, yeah. and and the move to sell the software business to Microfocus has just opened up new partnership opportunities. For yeah, you and, it's, guys. and in regards to that, we still have a very very strong partnership with the software guys. Um, you know, there's a you know the the largest connect that we have on, on, a, on a backup product today is Data Protector, so I don't expect that to change. Um, but there are people who prefer you know, to use Veeam and we have to support that. Yeah, but still, I mean, if you've got the, you know, your, your colleagues if you, you know, in, in Data Protector mm -hmm. and you're out aggressively partnering with Veeam and it's part of HPE, you, you know, maybe you get an email or you get a, hey, come on, Bill, you know, give me a break here. I mean, that, and now I feel like you know, the gloves are mm -hmm. off. You can do, you know, independent of all that you know, internal stuff, plumbing yeah. is, you know what's right for the customer. And yeah. I don't know, maybe Always, I'm overstating that. Uh, uh, perhaps a bit, because we'll still have you know equity ownership in the, in the, in the new, a new company. Again, with all the sort of connect I have, I think that regardless of where they, where the paychecks come from, if you will, we have to have a really strong partnership uh, with them. And it's, it's no different than you know, we also have a partnership with Mantech. I mean, we have other partnerships that customers just have made a preference around that we're not going to convince them. You know, to do something different. We'll try. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, we've got to we've got to have a strong partnership. All right. So we're going to be at uh, Discover. The Cube will be there for. We've been there many years now. I think yeah. this is our seventh Discover. So I think you've been there. Seventh as U.S. Discover. Yeah. You've been there as many years as I have. Yeah, so <laughs> what are we looking forward to there? So I think there's a bunch of announcements. Uh, you, you, we, we highlighted one of them today around the secondary flash array for, right. um, uh, Nimble. for Nimble. There's some new three-part announcements that are, that are certainly coming. The Synergy guys are going to certainly have a, a thing or two to say, I'm thinking, um, yeah. uh, based, on, uh, uh, based on the strength of that platform. That platform's really starting to take off. And so I think you're going to see, see that. I think this will probably be the, really the first Discover where uh, you know, you'll start to see, maybe the Madrid Discover will be different, but you'll start to see the, the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise Right, um, we keep focusing on things that we've spin merged out, uh, but the thing I think we need to focus on is the fact that we're this is like a phoenix of a, of a, of a, of a new company, right? Solely focused on enterprise infrastructure and the cut and the customer needs. We rebranded the TS uh, business on Point Next, which is all around transformation and, and, and uh, technology services. So it's almost like um, you know we're starting the clock over again, right? And for the HP employees, we're not going to—we're not changing your service levels, <laughs> but but for, for almost everything else, we're rebuilding a brand new a brand new co company, and that is uh, what Meg and the, and the board are doing is really exciting. Well, it's true. The last couple of discovers, we was, there was a distraction with the split. There was yeah. a distraction with two spin yeah. merges, and and but you've now seen the M&A activity focus on areas like storage, areas like. Converged, hyper-converged. So yeah, I mean, I, I always tell this story because you guys like my analogies, which is, you know, when you're, you know, when you've got lots of kids in your family. In my family, my oldest, I've got lots of pictures of. Yeah. When he's an infant, the middle kid, you know, uh, some pictures of. The, th the third one, virtually no pictures of, right? Because you go from man-to-man -man defense to, zo to zone, <laughs> zone defense. Same is true with a uh, CEO. When you've got seven or eight different things to manage, your focus it needs to be spread over seven, different, eight different things. Now, Meg uh, is actually got fewer children to manage, if you will, and that, like, <laughs> roll the analogy out a little bit, uh, and um, we got a lot of our attention, and a lot of focus, and, and that, I think, is really, really important. And all the pictures are digital, they're in the cloud, they're protected. Yeah. Bill, great One, to see you. Great to see you guys. Thanks very much Thanks, for Steve. coming Thanks. on theCUBE. Yeah, we'll see you uh, in Vegas. Yeah, you bet. All right, keep it right Bye, there, everybody. everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break.